What's going on everybody? Welcome to a new video. In this one, I'm going to be going over some simple and easy ways to beat one of the more popular defenses this year in Madden 19. And once again, it's the Crossfire Blitz. And so this one is out of Nickel 335 Odd from the Detroit Playbook. You also see it a lot out of 34 Odd and Dollar 326 and sometimes Big Dime 146. Um, it's not, in my opinion, as good as it was last year in Madden 18. Doesn't come through quite as consistently, but it can still definitely generate a lot of pressure, and a lot of people are still using it, and it can still be effective. So uh, I figured I'd go ahead and show you guys just some simple ways I like to beat one of the more common defenses in the game. And so in this example, uh, we're in the New Orleans Saints playbook Gun Trey Y Flex right here, and the play I like to go with is PA Screen. Now you might think this is crazy. Uh, you know, not many people run screen plays, but just to kind of start with this play, the default setup that a lot of people run is they base a line. You know, sometimes they'll press, but a lot of times you don't want to, those deep thirds on the sideline to get beat, so they'll drag these guys back. They'll blitz the slot corner, and they'll use her this guy, right? And so you, you get heat either off the slot corner or the looper, uh, in this case, Davis, and then you're using this kind of linebacker right here on the left side of the field. So you kind of have the intermediate left side, and you're responsible for the flats. Well, what a lot of people like to do when they run this defense is they get very aggressive because they're sending pressure and they want to basically make you throw something panic immediately and, and try and pick off the first route that develops but in this case what they're going to do is since that entire left side of the field is dedicated to their user they're not going to be able to get out there if you go ahead snap this and instant throw they're not out there in time and suddenly, you know, you might not break that for a 80 yard touchdown, but you're getting 20, 25 yards. And now they kind of have to calm down and get away from their base setup. So if they don't want you to throw that screen out there, then either they have to be a lot more aggressive with their user. If they still want to go ahead and blitz, you know, the slot cornerback press, all that stuff, they have to be a lot more aggressive with their user out there uh, whenever they're trying to basically see if you're going to instantly throw that screen. So to kind of simulate that, I can go ahead and go ahead and I'm going to throw this guy in a hard flat and put him out there to kind of simulate a user being very aggressive. If they start doing that, then what I like to do is simply, if I see them start shooting out there, basically at the snap, expecting the screen, you go ahead, just quick audible, bam, right over the middle, drag route, get up field, pick up 10 to 15 yards. So now you really put their user in a catch 22 where they really can't win. Uh, they have to decide, do I shoot out? It, it becomes basically a guessing game. They either have to decide, do I want to shoot out and try and anticipate the screen and maybe get beat quick over the middle? Or do I, you know, stay at home and possibly get burnt down the sideline for the screen? So it really puts a lot of stress on their user. Now, this is kind of the main way a lot of people like to set it up. You see a lot of different setups. You know, some people will do something like this and bring down Wilson, user Wilson. Uh, you know, people go with, you know, cover two shells sometimes. So they'll, they'll kind of manipulate everything to make it and turn it into a cover two shell. So you'll see that if they start doing that, then, you know, you, you just have to adjust as well. Uh, some of these methods might not be as effective if they're they're changing it up but for the default you know three deep five blitz type of setup like this uh, those two ways basically hit them with the screen and then hit them quick over the middle putting their user in a no-win situation is one way that i like to attack this defense now the second way i like to attack it is going to be out of the same formation so we have the same setup and just assume they're kind of catching on and, and using the stuff over on the left side of the field a little better in this case, we like to go, or I like to go, uh, to levels. And so the reason this play is very effective, especially against nickel 335 odd and a 34 odd, and it can be so against dollar if they bring in that cornerback, the guy we're going to be picking on here is going to be this guy in this seam flat zone. And so because he's lined up so far inside, what's going to happen on this play is most of the time he ends up bumping Benjamin Watson. And so what that's going to allow is Kamara is going to get a free release on the outside and get a lot of space to work with. So if we look at the snap of the ball, you see how he bumps, bam, Kamara gets out there quick, try and make a guy miss. He recovers. We end up getting, you know, 10 to 11 yards. So that's something that you really want to take advantage of. And it doesn't matter. You know, a lot of people like to say, okay, well, he's hit me to the flats out there. I'm going to go with a hard flat. Well, it doesn't matter. Hard flat, seam flat. A lot of times they still end up getting bumped out there right there you can see he still is able to get out there just because of his positioning pre-snap and the tight end was able to kind of mess him up a little bit he's not able to completely shoot out because benjamin watson is kind of right there you know running his route so he just muddies up the field a little bit for that guy trying to shoot out to the flat and so you can really pick on pick on that guy especially if it's you know not a super athletic guy you can really get out there like I said, very good against 335 odd and 34 when they have a linebacker trying to shoot out there. Dollar, it just depends where the guy's lined up. If they're going dollar and they're bringing them in, 
uh, then the same thing can happen. A lot of times with dollar though, the guy will be out here and he can have a little bit of a better angle. So this method might not be quite as effective as it is against something like 335 odd or 3-4 odd. Uh, but in the end, you know, you're able to kind of get that, especially if you're patient, let the table route develop. A lot of times your running back can get that outside positioning and you can get some decent yardage. All right, so the third way here is just going to be keep it simple and run the ball. You know, if your opponent's bringing pressure off the left edge and this looper's looping from right to left, run it where the looper is running away from. So in this case right here, we get the right edge, get some blocks, try and make a move, make a couple moves, pick up 10 to 12 yards. That's going to tell your opponent, hey, you can't send that same pressure off the left side and have, you know, guys looping to the opposite side of the formation because I'm going to take advantage of where those guys are basically vacating on the field right there. Cut it up. They got a block shed. I had a ton of room to work there. The defensive end got a block shed. Still picked up four to five yards there. So even if you're only getting four to five yards and aren't getting these huge chunk plays, which it is somewhat difficult this year in Madden 19 to get those, those huge plays, even if you're just getting steady yardage, your opponent's going to be forced to come out of this defense or at the very least this setup. And once you get them out of the setup they're comfortable with, you know, that's half the battle. Now you have them making adjustments that they might not want to be making and you're able to basically adjust and it opens up other things on your side of the field as well. So many people I see, you know, if I run this defense online, I see people, you know, just want to pass the ball against it. Most people, they, they don't think about going down and just running the ball, taking what the defense gives you, forcing me out of it. You know, if, if all of a sudden on first down and second down, I can't call this defense and I have to call a cover four or a cover two because I have to respect the fact that you might run the ball. Well, now that makes passing the ball 20 times easier for you, right? Now, you know, you're facing vanilla coverages and you're not facing, you know, a five man blitz coming off the edge every single down. So it's all about just taking what the defense gives you in this case, taking advantage of the fact that they're looping guys and taking that consistent yardage that the defense is giving you. All right, and the third way we're back in the Trey Y flex formation, this can be done out of pretty much any formation with three receivers on one side of it. This just so happens to be the one for the Saints. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of cover three one play touchdowns in the game this year. Uh, there's a lot of videos out on, on different, you know, uh, route concepts, I guess, that kind of get these guys open downfield against, you know, various coverages, cover two, cover three, cover four. Cover three is notoriously bad for getting beat deep. So in this case, you know, if you want to block six and try and bomb it one time and get them out of either this coverage, this blitz, or at least make them change up their coverage shell behind it, I'm all for it right here in this case. Something like that. Get a guy open in the seam, try and get, you know, a speedy guy like Ted Ginn downfield behind their safeties in this case. Uh, you're going to have Glover Quinn and I believe Darius Slay on that side of the field for the Lions. But, you know, right here, I'm just simply putting Michael Thomas on an out route, fading Ted Ginn. You always want to do it to the wide side of the field. So I'm on the left hash. You want your guy going, you know, in this case, Ted Ginn to the right. You want him fading where there's a lot of space. And so right there, you know, I wasn't able to pick up the pressure. I didn't block my running back. So that's something to be very aware of is, you know, against this blitz, if you're going to try and bomb it, ideally at least block your running back. In this case, I don't have... A tight end on the line of scrimmage i can actually motion watson in and then block him so even if you wanted to you could block seven that might be somewhat predictable if you're going up against a good opponent they might see like hmm, why would he want to motion watson in so just be aware of that but you're going to have the option to kind of bomb these cover three shells especially if they're just sitting in the same vanilla coverage every single time so just keep your opponent on their toes for that and that not only will force them to kind of switch up their defenses and not be as predictable but then it also forces them you know into different coverage shells that you can then take advantage of if they're not as familiar with it so those are pretty much my four you know easy simple ways to attack this defense the first wide receiver screens you know force your opponent to fly out there as a user defender uh, levels you know attack the flats attack the fact that they're shooting linebackers out to try and guard the flats Three, run the ball at the looper, run the ball at the guy who's, you know, purposely taking himself out of the play, essentially. And then four, bomb it. If they're being or if they're being predictable with their covered shell, you know, especially if they're just sitting in the default cover three shell, take some deep shots down the field to get them out of it. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. That's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, guys, take it easy.